here. Go like this if you can't hear. All right, good. It's so good to see you here this morning. It's good to see your faces, even though you all look like you're about to rob a bank. It's good, good to see you. Um, if you all have a bulletin, that's good, because you'll need it for the hymns. And then, um, did you all receive a communion cup? Everybody get a communion cup. If, if you did not get one and you need one, just raise your hand. Excellent, excellent. Um, just a word of announcement, we're gonna keep masks on. Not me, but you're all sitting so far away from me, you should be good, um, until communion time, and then we'll take them off and put them back on afterwards. Um, and other than that, we should be safe and ready to go. So let's take a deep breath, rejoice in this beautiful day. Don't anybody lean back too far and tumble down the hill. And let us prepare our hearts for worship. a great day to worship isn't it so good to be here rather than sitting in front of a computer screen I can tell you that <laughs> um, just a little disclosure as we get uh, going here this morning um, about a week and a half ago when I was up north I started to get a sore throat and uh, went to the urgent care and found out I had a little tonsillitis or something like that so I was on antibiotics cleared up all is good but my typical after something like that is to have a cough. So I've been coughing the last few days. And so I went to get the COVID test on Wednesday because I wanted to be sure that you all were gonna be safe and that nobody felt bad about my coughing. Um, and I got the results back yesterday. I had both the antibody test and the, and the actual do you have it test. They're both negative. Kind of disappointed about not having those antibodies. I kind of wanted those, but um, uh, I may cough but it's not contagious. I've been on antibiotics and it's not COVID. So I just want to let you know that so I don't make you uncomfortable should you hear me cough. All right. <laughs> yay, big yay. <laughs> um, so this week was pretty good except for Tuesday. Tuesday was not a good day. Um, and I don't know if you've gotten a letter in the mail yet or not, but it's all the Lotzenheiser's fault. Um, <laughs> I need to share that with you. If you haven't gotten the letter already, my day started with Marilyn coming in and announcing her intent to retire. Oh, no. Try not to cry. Yeah. Um, which I am so happy for her um, because I know she's ready to do some stuff at home and spend more time with grandkids and I am gonna miss her like crazy. 
Um, so, uh, you know, and then of course the minute that happened, I'm like, oh, okay, and where's your buddy? <laughs> um, so then Jeff came in. Uh, Jeff also, now I need to tell you, I'm just gonna share a little, little with you in case you don't know what things are like in the office. Every day, these two sweethearts at noon prepare their lunch and they go in the conference room and they sit together and have lunch. It's so sweet every day until promptly at 1229 when they clean everything up and they go back to their jobs. They are, um, they are just meant to be together all the time. So Marilyn retiring and Jeff not, I knew was not gonna be a thing. Um, Jeff has graciously agreed to stay a little bit longer, but, and he's not um, settled on his final departure date, but uh, probably by the end of first quarter, Jeff also will retire. So um, I, again, I'm so happy for them and so sad for me, uh, selfishly, because it's really about me, isn't it? <laughs> um, but they both have served this church as their um, as their love in their ministry for many, many years. And we are going to celebrate them and honor their service uh, as it gets closer to that day. But in the meantime, please join me in wishing them well and congratulations. Oh, those bratty kids. Um, lots of uh, folks ask, and we all ask of ourselves during this time, what can we do? What how can we be of service? And so many things that we think about that we could do as acts of service are made difficult by the fact that we can't be together. Um, so it's very hard to find ways to be of service. But one of the things we have great concern about these days right now are um, students and teachers going back to school. And I'm very concerned about our teachers, um, not just from their physical safety standpoint, but the frustration that they must feel um, to be called to this profession to serve and to take care of kids and to teach them and yet to be so handicapped from doing that as well as they want to. And I know that has to take a tremendous toll on the soul. And so I was thinking and with some um, prompting from uh, Julie um, that maybe this fall we can, instead of blessing the backpacks, uh, maybe we can bless our teachers and maybe we can do an adopt a teacher program where we um, you know, assign some names and so forth and that we pray for those people and reach out to them and just you know, try and connect and offer as much encouragement and support as we can. That's something that we can safely do and I think would be appreciated. I, I just feel for those folks uh, in this noble calling that they have and, and the frustrations that they must be experiencing. So uh, be thinking about that. I talked to um, Cheryl this morning about maybe we can pull together a committee of people to think about how best to do this so that in the next couple weeks we can um, lift off and, and do that well. Uh, please be in prayer about our teachers and about a way that we can serve them. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Um, the call to worship is printed in your bulletin. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet God provides for the basic sustenance of life. May our hearts be open to trust you. Look at the birds of the air. They neither study nor plan nor plot their course, and yet God writes the instinct for migration into their hearts. May our eyes be open to see you. Look at the birds of the air. They neither talk nor vote, nor debate their responsibility, yet God weaves them into communities which nurture and defend. Let us join for the first time in singing together our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
sing, isn't it? <laughs> We're a little rusty though, I can tell. <laughs> um, with your permission, I'm going to delay children's time to a little bit later in the service. Do we have any children here this morning? I don't think we do. That's okay, because I really meant this children's time for you, so it's going to work out good. <laughs> Be very afraid. <laughs> uh, before we go to God in prayer, um, it's been a long time since we've been able to share our prayer concerns. And um, I know particularly with the events of the past week or two and uh, Caleb Starr, I know he and his family have been on our minds, but what other prayer concerns are out there that we just want to keep in our hearts and in our prayers in the days to come? Just go ahead and raise your hand and shout them out. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Jim is doing our um, video today because we do want to post this service online let, uh, and Jim is doing better. Um, he is now past his typical every six weeks we go to the hospital. So we're just going to hold a good thought that we've, we've gone beyond a year now. So um, hopefully things are, are better. Um, please keep uh, John Dodge in your prayers and his family. Anybody else that we want to? Yes, ma'am. For, for the unemployed. For the unemployed, yes. For all those health care workers, yes, Linda. For all those using the tiny pantry, um, and it is being used a lot, so feel free to bring some more in. Yes. Um, if you didn't hear that, we are getting a lot of traffic on the tiny pantry. And I do want to say thanks to Tim and Linda who are um, keeping an eye on that and making sure that um, we stock it when it's not being stocked by members of the community. But if you have an opportunity to drop something by, that would be uh, really helpful. It is definitely getting uh, used. All right, let us go to God in prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, how great thou art and how truly great it is to come with joy, to adore you and to spend time in your presence, to appreciate the beauty of your creation and the gift of community that is your church. In these days when our thoughts are swirling around the chaos of all that's going on, it's so easy to lose focus and to let fear and despair take over. But on this Sabbath day, we step out of the chaos and we sit in your presence to remember that we are loved, that we are so very blessed, and that we have so much to be thankful for, not the least of which is your promise to see us through all that life hands us. Lord, you call us to a place of personal holiness where you take the raw material that's our lives and you shape us and you smooth our rough edges and you shine our gifts and abilities so that we can rise to the potential that you've put in each one of us. In these times, we are feeling adrift and crippled by the limitations of safe practices. And yet we want to be of service to those in need Help us to find your inspiration and to tune our hearts to your call. Give us courage and wisdom to find opportunities to offer help and grace wherever it's needed. Lord, this morning we lift to you the cares and concerns of our church and of our community. We lift the family of Caleb Starr, this community and the community of law enforcement officers who are grieving his tragic loss. We ask for your most intimate grace and mercy on his wife and children, that they may know your comfort and peace as they rest in the sure knowledge that Caleb is safely with you. We ask your blessing on all those who work in the service of our communities. Keep them safe and give them an extra measure of insight and wisdom for the difficult challenges they face. Holy God, as we worship this morning, we are specifically seeking to find our place and our purpose for today and in the days to come. Help us to set aside fear, to put our faith entirely in you, to open ourselves to new ways of living and to seek out avenues of discipleship which bring us into your kingdom. 
Lord, we lift all of this to you in the name of Jesus, who draws us to you and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So this morning we are starting a new series just for the month of August called Life Happens. It feels like an awful lot has been happening lately and it's often hard to know how to deal with it. And so I thought we'd take a few weeks to look for some direction from the Bible for times like these. But to begin with, we need to first reckon with the idea that the nature of life, the nature of living, is that things happen. Sometimes we make them happen. Sometimes we let them happen. And sometimes they just happen. It's life. So I thought we would do a little thing this morning. I would like to invite life to come forward. Life, where are you? There she is. Life itself. And some things are going to happen to some of you. Okay? Life is going to hand you some things that you might have to deal with. So I'll just let life do what she does. Have we inflicted enough life yet? How many of you got the, did life happen to? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. That's, that's good. All right, we're going to see what life does. All right. Um, let's start with Gary. What did life give you? The cards? Yeah. An ace, a nine, and a six. All right, an ace of what? An ace of clubs, you got a pay raise. You got a 10% pay raise. Whoa. Life is good. Yeah. All right, what else did you get? You said a nine? Yes, a nine, nine of spades. Nine of spades, oh. A storm blew through and knocked a huge oak tree down on your garage on both of your cars. Total loss. Bummer. What else did you get? Six of diamonds. The dog threw up in your shoes this morning. You're going to be late for work. Um, who else did? All right, Tim. What did life give you? King of clubs. Good news. Your daughter is having twins. Bad news. Your son-in-law just lost his job and they're moving in with you. What else? King of diamonds. Ah, uh, while you were in the grocery store shopping, a teenager learning to drive accidentally smashed into your car. What else? Uh, Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds, okay. Uh, your brother sent you a lottery ticket for your birthday and you won $1,000. Yay. Yay! Okay, good. Who else? John, what'd you get? Well, pair of fours, four hearts, four diamonds. Oh, fours. Okay, four hearts. <laughs> a week ago, someone told you a joke and you laughed until you started hiccuping and you haven't stopped since. <laughs> the doctor diagnoses chronic hiccups. And you got another four? What was that one? Four of diamonds. Four of diamonds. Um, someone mysteriously mowed your lawn today for you and you don't know who it was. Excellent. What else? Queen of spades. Queen of spades. <laughs> Ooh. You got a letter of notice from the IRS. You're being audited. Again? Early projections are you're going to owe $5,000, dude. <laughs> Who else? Uh, Marilyn. What was that? Two of clubs. Um, you came out to go to work this morning and you have a flat tire. Sorry about that. What else? 
Eight of Spades. Oh, oh, Eight of Spades is a good one. Your husband has just decided that he feels called to make a change and wants to remove, move to a remote island in the Caribbean to be a caricature artist. <laughs> he says you can come if you want to. <laughs> what else did you get? Ten of Hearts. You just received a $500 tax refund. Excellent. All right, now there was somebody way back there. What'd you get? Eight of clubs, eight of hearts. Um, in the greatest election mystery ever, you were unanimously elected by write-in to serve in the Senate. Yay, you're a senator. Um, what else? Can we relay? Three of clubs. Three of clubs. We're just gonna pause for a moment. Holy and loving God, life happens, but we never want for bad things to happen to people. And so we pray that that is in some way a false alarm, that it is uh, folks going out to just check and make sure that everything is okay. We pray your mercy and grace on whatever is happening in that situation right now. Amen. Um, okay, so where did we leave? A three of clubs. All right, on your way to work this morning, the nervous driver in front of you kept riding his brakes. You end up rear-ending his car when he suddenly stands on his brakes for a squirrel. Sorry about that. What else? That was it? Okay. Um, did you get a card? Nine of hearts. You just won an all-expenses-paid trip to Fiji. Excellent. All right. Were there any other Life Happens cards out there? Yeah? What else did you get? Two spades. of spades. Um, let's see. It just got really cold and the pipes just froze and busted. Did you get another card? No? Okay. All right. Life happens, right? These things happen. Maybe not all of these things, but these things happen, right? Things happen good and bad and we don't get a choice. How many of you were given a choice as to what life was going to give you? No. They, life just handed it to you. She's heartless, isn't she? That life. Once the cards are dealt, all that you can do is figure out how you're going to play them. Right? What we can choose is we can choose what kind of impact all those things are going to have on our lives. We can choose how we react to the things that life deals us. I was reading a book recently that made reference to things like chaos theory and the butterfly effect. You know what the butterfly effect is? It's a, um, a theory that says small things can have nonlinear impacts on complex systems. In other words, and it's best illustrated in, and I'm sure you've heard this, a butterfly flaps its wings and halfway around the world a typhoon happens. Okay, so have you ever heard of that, the butterfly effect? Yep. That small things through a series of events can become magnified and can go in different directions, but they often have impact way on down the road. There are a lot of examples of the butterfly effect in history um, and in day-to-day -day life. Um, one of the things you'll find online is a theory that um, the a boat of Cuban refugees that sank where a mother died but the son lived as a butterfly flap of wings you can draw a line from that to the fact that we ended up invading Iraq years later this happened so then that happened which meant this happened and then the reaction to that was this and blah 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 until on down the line that's what happened that would be an example of the butterfly effect um, if you've ever read anything like the Battle of Midway, for example, um, a loose screw in the plane of a Japanese reconnaissance plane was a butterfly effect 
for the outcome of the Battle of Midway, as were many other butterfly flaps of the wings. Do you understand what I'm saying? Small things lead to other things which can become bigger and can have huge effects. The butterfly effect is as good a theory as any to explain why we're in the situation or how we're in the situation that we are in today. The likely theory is that a bat which carried the virus cross-infected another animal or maybe a human, but more likely another animal until cross-contamination entered a human who without knowing it spread the virus to others and it took off like a house of fire. And some people who didn't realize they were very sick got on an airplane and took it to another population and so on and so on. That's a butterfly effect. Life happens. And sometimes the butterfly event brings a typhoon. Each step was a flap of butterfly wings compared to the typhoon we're now in the middle of, but it began with a flap. Life happens. Small and big things happen and we rarely realize the impact that those things are gonna have on our lives or the ripples their impacts will have out into the world. But make no mistake, we are part of the chain of events. We are also butterflies flapping our wings. What are the outcomes of the things that we put out into the world? Are we causing typhoons by our actions? Or are we creating ripples of grace that can calm storms? Life happens. What are we doing about it? <clears throat> so the first in our series called Life Happens is called Check Your Fear. And it's based on wisdom from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. I know you've heard this before. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you all still hear me okay, even with the traffic, or do we need to turn things up a little bit? You want it to go up a little bit? Okay. Um, I get it. Okay. Jeff, which button do I turn? White, white knob, bottom left. Can you hear me any better? Is that better? Yep. All right, good. All right, hear these words from Matthew chapter 6. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? <clears throat> and why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Ah, I'm so sorry. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? I'm going to take a little break. I apologize. <clears throat> Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. <laughs> they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, 
you will one of little faith. <clears throat> Do not worry saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear. For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God <clears throat> and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Will you play a little something? <laughs> Just play him. I don't care. <laughs> Just play a little something for a minute. <coughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I'm a bit of a news junkie. I like to know what's going on in the world. How many of you feel the same? <clears throat> I like to know what happened and how it happened and why it happened and what the likely ramifications of it will be. I feel like I can cope with most things if I see them coming and if I have an opportunity to think things through so I can prepare. <coughs> but nothing prepared me for what we're going through right now. <clears throat> so I don't watch the news as often as I used to because it's giving me anxiety. And lately I feel sick to my stomach a lot. <clears throat> I wanna read and sleep a lot. <clears throat> and those are pretty classic signs of depression, wanting to escape your current reality. Not that I don't think that there are solutions to the problems that we have. I do, and there are. <clears throat> but I'm seriously discouraged by the reports of so many people who seem to be unwilling to join together for a common goal of goodness for all. And it leaves me feeling overwhelmed by my inability to fix any of this. I can't fix a pandemic. <clears throat> I can't fix racism. I can't fix the fact that three outside nations seem to have a greater interest in who wins our elections than we do. I can't fix our inclination 
to recreate truth at the same time that we call each other liars. I can't fix gun violence. I can't fix climate change. Life happens. <clears throat> and the sheer volume of things I can't fix or control is making for a hefty amount of anxiety and even fear. Life happens. But I need to say that there are days that I feel like I'm a butterfly flapping away and near as I can tell, it's not making a bit of difference. And there are days when I quit flapping and I curl up with a good mystery adventure romance and hope that it'll soothe my brain as I fall asleep so that I don't have bad dreams. <clears throat> like many of Jesus' teachings, I struggle with this text from Matthew. The don't worry, be happy passage that tells us birds don't worry, so why shouldn't you, philosophy, rubs at my sense of responsibility? <clears throat> Quite frankly, I feel like too many people in the world are wandering around not worrying about things, believing that somehow everything is just going to turn out all right without any effort or sacrifice on their part. <coughs> I was raised to think ahead, to anticipate, to be prepared, to take responsibility, to take care of problems before they become problems. And I find that not worrying about what you're gonna eat leads to a lot of ordering pizza because no one did the grocery shopping. <laughs> and I find that not worrying about what you're gonna wear leads to no one doing the laundry and that doesn't work for me either. So once again, Jesus and I are not entirely on the same page here. <clears throat> but just like the parables that we've been exploring, hidden among the birds of the air and the lilies of the field and the green grass and all that stuff are some pretty significant gems that we need to consider. <clears throat> There's two in particular that I know you've heard before and I know that you're familiar with, but sometimes we have to take these out and dust them off and look at them again, right? so that we can get the fullest value of these nuggets of wisdom. The first is the line that appears about a third of the way through the passage. As Jesus asks us, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? The answer is no. Say it. No. Good. <clears throat> worrying doesn't add anything to your life. Worrying has never fixed a problem or made it magically go away. In fact, worry actually hinders us when we're in crisis. <clears throat> worry and anxiety, if sustained, can cause the heart to beat faster. It can actually cause heart distress and even stroke. It can trigger the body's fight or flight response, which triggers hormones which cause a boost in sugar levels and triglycerides. It can cause difficulty swallowing <coughs> or maybe coughing. Um, it can make it difficult for you to sleep. Worry does not help. And worry doesn't solve problems. And worrying about what's going on right now around us certainly isn't gonna make things get any better. Okay, <clears throat> I'm guessing that this is not news to you that I haven't told you anything that's a great surprise. And you're thinking, why did I come out here today? You know that worrying isn't good for you. So what is Jesus talking about? <clears throat> Let's go back to the first sentence. In grammar class, we call this the topic sentence. And Jesus says, do not worry about your life. Not just don't worry, not just don't worry, be happy. You have no need to worry. That's not what he says. Do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or what you will wear. Now, I think this can change meaning if you put emphasis in different places. Do not worry about your life. There are other things to worry about. Your life isn't one of them, maybe. Or do not worry about your life. Worry about others, maybe. So it kind of depends on how you say it, right? <clears throat> but do not worry about your life. How will that help? Will it extend your life? No. Birds, lilies, grass, yada yada, God takes care of these things. <clears throat> Do you not think that God is looking out for you as well? Instead, 
Now here's the good part. This is the money shot here. Strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. <clears throat> How many of you have heard that before? Maybe sung it in a song in church. <clears throat> I think that most people who read this passage <clears throat> tend to drift into the don't worry, be happy section and stop short of the answer key. I think I'm allergic to this lot. Wow. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't be, don't worry about your life. Don't be self-centered. Don't stress about the daily trivial things like food and drink and clothing. Instead, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How many of you in the midst of all this stuff had gone, whoa, I need to clear the decks. Where is God? What is righteousness right now? <clears throat> Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then the rest will fall into place. To be clear, Jesus is not telling us that we should sit in a hammock and wait for food and drink to be delivered on a silver platter. <clears throat> Jesus is telling us not to focus on our lives but rather to focus our lives on God and on righteous, on righteous living. And when we do that, when we get in sync with God's plan, things have a way of coming together. It's not that you'll be weighted on hand and foot, but that by focusing on righteousness, on love, on justice, on goodness, on truth and honor and integrity and excellence, you'll find the whole system works better. You'll work better. You'll feel better. You'll live better. The world will be better. <clears throat> Fear, worry, anxiety, they don't help. They just cripple us by taking our eyes off the prize. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek righteousness. Yearn for righteousness. Embrace righteousness. Life happens, <clears throat> good and bad. Butterflies flap their wings and stir up breezes that batter us. A butterfly flapped its wings and a bat transferred a germ to an animal and an animal passed the germ to a human and a human got on a plane and a bunch of people went to public places and now people we know are sick and dying. <clears throat> And I went to a clinic this week to get tested. A butterfly flapped its wings and I couldn't stop it. But I can seek God. And I can seek righteousness. <coughs> and I can wear a mask and I can wash my hands and I can call someone who's alone. And I can buy extra food for the food pantry. I can pray. I can post positive messages on Facebook. I could adopt a teacher and support them as they try to figure out how to educate our children safely. <clears throat> I can flap my wings and stir up a breeze of righteousness for the sake of the kingdom. I am not powerless, so I don't need to be fearful. I am a butterfly with wings of my own. A butterfly flapped its wings <clears throat> and some self-centered, inhumane, evil jerk of a human being decided that the Bible justified the capture and enslavement of other human beings. And he brought them in slave ships to the colonies so that an economy could be built on cheap labor. And an entire nation went to war over it and people died. <clears throat> and when the slaves were freed, they were let loose into a culture that was threatened by them and didn't trust them and didn't like them and made no room for them and which found countless end arounds to keep them from taking part in anything from jobs to land ownership to bank loans to education right on down to bus seats and drinking fountains and i didn't do this 
but the butterfly is still flapping its wings and the breezes are still running hot and God's children are still being horribly abused. And we need to seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness. We can't sit around worrying about our own inconveniences if we want God's kingdoms to come. We have to seek righteousness. <clears throat> there is no room, no time, no energy to be wasted on fear and anxiety and worry. We are not powerless. We are butterflies with wings of our own and it's time for us to stir up a breeze that says racism is wrong, even when, and especially when it's subtle. Seek first the kingdom of God. I didn't create this mess of a political system that we've made <clears throat> that seems to think government will somehow work better. If we put an aisle in the center of a room and call each other adversaries. I wasn't in the room when that happened and neither were any of my sisters. But a butterfly flapped its wings that day and goodness and righteousness and integrity and honor have been taking a beating ever since. <clears throat> and I can worry about what this world is coming to, or I can flap my wings and start a breeze of my own. I can stand six feet apart from my brothers and sisters in solidarity with God's kingdom and righteousness. And we can all flap our wings and stir up a mighty breeze that says that the order of the day is not about power <clears throat> or who won the White House. But it's about how many people have jobs and how many people have adequate health care and education and safe places to live because those should be the measure of society's success. Seek first righteousness. Seek first honor and integrity and excellence. Seek first a model of peaceful living because if we ever achieve it, you aren't going to have to worry about food or drink or clothing or anything else for that matter. When righteousness rules the day, everyone's going to have what they need. Worry is self-focused. Righteousness is outward focused. But it works like a boomerang. And what you send out into the world ultimately comes back to you. It's God's kingdom design but you have to want it. You have to choose it. And worry will never work as a substitute for righteousness. Life happens every single day, whether we want it to or not, a new card is dealt into our hands each and every day. And we can waste valuable pieces of our soul lamenting what we've been dealt. We can choose to go take a nap and pretend it never happened. Or we can seek God's righteousness and start flapping our wings to create a breeze that will change the world. You are not without power. You have been given everything you need, most especially the loving grace of Jesus Christ. Use it for good and let go of your fear. Amen. made it. <clears throat> it may or may not help to remember that this was, this is not the first time in history of humanity when things are scary or life seems ominous. This is not the first time people have had fear. I can't imagine what it must have been like for Jesus and his disciples to make their way back to Jerusalem, <clears throat> complete with a welcoming home parade only to find themselves facing arrest and death mere days later. And yet Jesus gathered his community, <clears throat> his closest friends, and he shared a meal with them. Even in the midst of gut-wrenching fear and uncertainty, Jesus chose to seek first God's kingdom. Together they celebrated the meal of Passover and then Jesus gave them a gift I'm sure they didn't recognize it for what it was at the time, but it was a gift of ritual that would be handed down from generation to generation to us right here today. And it reminds us to focus. It reminds us of our center. It reminds us of who and whose we are. 
so that fear doesn't have to rule our lives. On the night Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Would you all take your communion cups and lift them up like this? <clears throat> holy and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You may remove your mask and partake of the communion that you have with you, the elements. And then we're going to sit and just listen to Reuben for a moment. And you can be in an attitude of prayer or thanksgiving or the fear that you need to release. <clears throat> Let us pray. Good and gracious God, through the gift of Holy Communion, we remember your love and your sacrifice. We are drawn into right relationship with you once again, and we are made whole. Help us to keep our focus on you, that fear may have no power over us. But instead, let us continually seek your kingdom and your righteousness, that we may experience your joy and your peace. Give us strength, O oh God, to do your kingdom work. Give us patience to know that though our actions may only be the breeze of a butterfly's wings, in time and in communion with our brothers and sisters, we may stir up a vibrant breeze of righteousness to your good and your glory. Amen. We did it. We're going to sing together our closing hymn, His Eyes on the Sparrow. There's just two verses. <clears throat> Let us join in singing.
it was so good to worship together with you this morning. I'm so glad that you came out. How do you feel about this? Do we want to do this again? Okay. Same time, same place next week. Okay. Um, again, assuming that the weather is good, uh, we'll do this again. And I will try really hard to work on this cough thing. So, so very sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we will continue with the series Life Happens with the next uh, installment. And it's Have Faith is the next coping strategy for life happening to all of us. Um, any other announcements that any questions anybody has? All right, good. And now go forth and leave your fear behind. Keep your heart tuned to God's voice and its kingdom message. Be at peace and be well. Amen.